Good morning, everybody. Um, gonna do another update. It's been a pretty eventful uh, week. We uh, got the engine going, which is great. Um. <laughs> that the transaxle works um, but we're obviously having uh, some other issues when you do something like this <laughs> um, even though you do your best job in making sure all the seals are good and stuff like that you might miss a few things and uh, the vehicle might leak from just about every orifice so yeah that's kind of what we've been chasing down so I'm going to go over some of the systems that we've been uh, putting together and uh, the challenges that we faced and uh, the solutions. Um, so stick around. So one of the first things uh, that we did was we have a push button start. Okay. Now what that usually means is the brakes need to work. Okay. Because you push on the brake and then it allows you to engage the starter, which fires the engine. Okay. So, uh, we had to get the brakes working. Now, we plumbed the brake system. We got it all in with uh, basically factory flares. I didn't have to do any flaring, but you can also see that there's a little bit of monkey business here, um, which we'll be taken care of later on by uh, making our own length uh, flared uh, tubes. So I do have a flaring tool, tool, so we'll be able to do that, and it's going to be an inverted flare, a double inverted flare. Um, we've got our master cylinder uh, booster, vacuum booster. Um, we've got a proportioning valve. So there's a lot of connections here, and of course, uh, when we first get, got it all together, I think every connector leaked. It was, uh, I looked online, and we... Uh, found that um, some people say, oh, it's easy, don't worry about it. Well, <laughs> I don't find it too easy. So, what did we do? Well, I saw a tip on one of the blogs, which is you, on a leaky connector, you loosen it, you kind of wiggle the tube a little bit, and then you retighten it. Don't try to just keep cranking down on it. And that actually worked. So, we actually have now a brake system uh, that doesn't leak. Now on to the other problem. And the other problem was, even after we bled the system, we got all the air bubbles out, I had a spongy pedal. And I was like, why do I still have a spongy pedal? Well, it turns out that between the booster and the master cylinder, there's a little push rod. And that little push rod has an adjuster in it. Well, unfortunately, this one came with an adjuster that was just too stinking short. And so what we had to do was we had to make our own. So I went to the bench and found the right threaded stainless steel uh, screw. I modified the head so that it fit into the plunger on the master cylinder. And we made our own. And now we have a very nice uh, hard brake pedal. Um, and the brakes are working great. So, tip for you, make sure you check that all of the slop is taken out by that adjuster between the master cylinder and the booster. So, a little tip there. Now, the next thing that we ran into was something of the same ilk, which is that guy right there. So, that is the slave cylinder for the clutch. Again, we had the same problem where we bled everything out, got all the bubbles out, and it still was squishy and not engaging the clutch. So I pulled the slave cylinder out and found out that the push rod was way too short. So I've ordered a, an adjustable push rod um, from Speedway. It was like 12 bucks. It was really cheap. 
and that should fix our squishy clutch pedal. So, so those are the two major things that we had to solve. Now let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. So the turbos uh, need oil. Okay, so they're actually cooled and lubed by engine oil. So what we had to do is we had to modify, if I can get in here, it's hard to see. We had to modify that port to take a, a high pressure uh, hose that then goes into a T, uh, and those are uh, dash uh, 3AN fittings. And then that delivers oil to the top of both turbos. And that went pretty well. The problem was the return line, which is down here, uh, we had to make that um, because they didn't have, couldn't find a really good AN fitting, so I actually made uh, my own. So we did some welding there. Um, on the other side, it was leaking, so I had to tighten up that connection. And then we had to weld in these guys which are the returns uh, for the turbos now the really nice thing about an LS is it has basically two oil pans it's got a bottom plate and then it's got the actual oil pan plate so you don't have to take the whole oil pan off in order to put these uh, return lines in it turns out that you can take the bottom plate off uh, weld in your aluminum bung and you're done and it's so fantastic. So um, really starting to dig on the uh, LS platform. So it's uh, it's made things a little bit easier when we're doing some of this plumbing uh, here. And then the next thing is the coolant system. Uh, we haven't gotten the engine up to full temperature yet. So we still need to work on the cooling system. You can see I have a little too much stress on one of these connectors. So I'm going to have to take things apart, which is nice to have all of the uh, all of the body panels off to do that. And then we've got uh, it's probably uh, some bubbles are going to be in the system because it's above the radiator. So we have to take care of that and make sure that we get good flow. Um, but so far it hasn't leaked, so uh, that's the good news there. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to take care of the intercooler. So we're going to have to hook the uh, output of the turbos to the intercooler. This is a dual core intercooler and then plumb those back up. Now, you might ask, why is the intercooler back here and not up front? Okay, well that's a good question. So the turbos are here. You can see they're open to the engine bay currently. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to fab up a box that will completely surround the air filters and the input to the turbos. And then the, um, can't really see it here, but actually the scoops that are on the side, you've seen those from previous videos, have a tube coming through them and there'll be a flexible tube going to that box. And then so all the cold air will flow through that box into the filters and then any leftover will flow right through the intercooler. So I think this is kind of an efficient way to do it. Uh, time will tell and we'll see if that actually bears out. But um, that way it isolates it from the engine heat and um, allows cold air to go through the intercooler. So I'm gonna give it a try. Remember I said, this is an experiment. Um, and then we've got our blow off valves here. Uh, the blow off valves still need to be hooked up. Uh, basically what they're for is if you have any boost remaining when you pull your foot off of the accelerator, uh, these open up and relieve the pressure. The next thing is, is the wastegate. Um, we have uh, an internal wastegate for these turbos, which is really nice. I've, I've, on our last 69 Mustang project, we had external wastegates and it was a pain. There was a lot more plumbing to do and so on and so forth. But um, these ones are nice uh, and easy. So when basically there's too much boost, this little actuator pushes this rod out and will open this uh, gate and will dump some of the uh, exhaust gases straight out the pipe and bypass the impeller inside of the turbo. 
Um, for those of you who don't know how turbos work, um, there's basically an impeller in what they call the hot side, which is on the exhaust tubing. So the pulses of the exhaust come in from the uh, uh, headers over here, travel up, and then they spin an impeller in here which then is linked to an impeller that's inside of the cold side, which is this aluminum housing. That impeller then compresses the air and then sends it to the engine, and you actually have a denser charge, and therefore you have more oxygen, so you can feed in more fuel, and you get more power. So what we have to do now is we have to hook up this waste gate. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of a problem. We're kind of off. I could clock it differently, but if I clocked it differently, then this thing gets in the way of a lot of other stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fab up uh, basically a bar that goes across here. Uh, it's going to have to be stiff so that when this actuates, this gives the same uh, push. So we'll have to get these two uh, as parallel as possible. Um, and then that way it'll operate as it's supposed to. The other one's going to be a lot easier because it's basically... Uh, we got it clocked right and all I have to do is just connect this up so that's gonna be pretty easy so anyway that's it for now um, obviously we still have a lot of welding to do um, I haven't got to that yet because I've been itching to um, put this thing on the ground and uh, get it driving uh, the other thing I had a problem with yesterday was I noticed that the discs were floppy I was like, hmm, that's a little weird. So what I had to do is take all of this apart, take the knuckle apart and the hub, and I found that the um, bearings were completely trashed. And that was my fault. So when I actually put the bearings in here, I did not press um, the hub in uh, by su and supporting the inner races of the uh, bearing and therefore I destroyed the bearing when I pressed it in. So live and learn, uh, watched another video on this and was able to get both of these fixed with new bearings. And so that's going to help us a lot when we do our first drive. Um, I'm also starting to put in all of the new hardware for the system. Um, and then we're gonna Loctite that hardware in so that we uh, actually have a good working suspension on the rear. Now, we're not going to do anything crazy. I'm just going to take it up and down my driveway. i got a pretty big driveway, which is nice. So we'll kind of ride it around, I guess, naked uh, once we get all of these uh, things sorted out. So anyway, stay tuned. Um, I hope you enjoyed this short video, kind of on an update of what we've been doing over the last few days. Um, again, really happy that the engine's running and sounding good. Some people have made comments that it sounds terrible, but um, I think that's just my phone. <laughs> so uh, in person, it just sounds really strong and, and uh, it runs so smooth. And we have a pretty hard engine mounts on this and the car does not shake at all. So it's really fantastic that uh, we've got a nice smooth engine. So. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe, um, and you can watch uh, the rest of the progress and just kind of follow us along. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.